Hi, in this session we will talk about automating the stop UI testing in Rupees. I am Alexey Grinevich from Inflector Rupees team. If you have any questions during or after this session, please use the chat window for this workshop. If you search for information about UI testing, the majority of results will be devoted to web UI testing. Web UI and desktop UI have own features and own problems. So in this three-part workshop, we will focus on those things that are specific to desktop UI. In the first part, we will talk about automation technologies and control libraries. The second part is about keyboard and mouse input. And the third part is about API access to applications, starting application, closing application, and passing command line to the application. There is a number of technologies used to build the UI on the desktop. And Rupees has a number of tools to deal with these technologies. Let's consider a number of example applications built with different technologies and see how and what we may use to deal with them. So here we have a number of applications. This is calculator application and its native Windows application. It's Java application. It's, man it's Windows Forms managed application. One application built using WPF, it's .NET with WPF, and one application is a terminal uh, connected to external server, it's so-called green screen application. All these applications are built using different technologies. So Rupees has own set of tools to deal with them. And the first tool is SPY. When you have a new application, it is always a good idea to inspect it with SPY to get some idea. The SPY, if I click on its right part, shows a drop-down showing different supported technologies. The most general for desktop is UI automation. In addition to that, there is Managed, Java and iAccessible which is an older version of UI automation. Let's use this UI automation and see how it will work with our applications. I'm hitting the SPY button to inspect my applications. So I have this SPY available on the screen and I need to put it into the tracking mode. I may do it using the button or by pressing the shortcut control G. Shortcut is more useful in general because when you want to exit this tracking mode, most probably you have your mouse hovering currently selected item that you have interest in and you cannot stop it in other way by shortcut because you will otherwise have to move your mouse away. So. I'm hovering the element, for example, button 5 and pressing Ctrl G and now I can see more details about a selected element. So there are plenty of properties. Some of them are not supported. Uh, so they could be here, but they are not here. But in general, I can see most important information about this control. So it is a button. It has text 5. It, it's pressable, so it's more or less reasonable information about it. I may try to check some more specific controls, such as radio button or checkbox. So let me hover over the degrees radio and see, can I figure out its checked state from this property or not? If I look at the properties and scroll around to find something, I may finally find this is selected property. It's set to true and looks like it's related to this uh, checked state of this radio. I may 
check this by selecting similar control, which is radiance, and making sure that it is selected property is set to false. So this property relates to the checked state. When I stopped tracking, I may see the tree or left part of the spy. Actually, it's intended to navigate through the hierarchy of all controls available in the application. So I climbed up and now at, I'm at a window level and I may see all controls inside this application. So for example, I may select and highlight this sum button on the screen. Well, we may see that calculator is more or less supported by this UI automation technology. Let's proceed to other applications. So I'm hitting Control G and trying the Managed Windows Forms application. As you can see, various elements of these applications are also highlighted to pretty low detail. So it looks like we may deal with managed application using UI automation. And this is true in many cases. Now proceed to WPF. You see that we also may see it is selecting elements of the application at pretty low level. And if we go down here, we would uh, find how to read properties of this application. So WPF has also good native support for your automation. Now proceed to Java. This Java application has two parts. One which is light blue is more or less supported. You see it's highlighted and elements are highlighted. But if we hover over bottom part, nothing gets highlighted in particular. So it's like a black box. We cannot read elementary properties or, or we cannot distinguish atomic elements. So it's hidden from us. So in such cases, we consider that we don't support this technology. In this application, upper part is Java AWT, while down part is Java Swing. These are two UI technologies within Java. Last application that we are going to consider today is this terminal. It has some text. So when we investigate in it, the primary question we have is, can we read this text from the screen? Because as for interaction, we may, for example, type something here, we can send cursor case, it's more or less trivial with rupees, but how to get the output of the application, how to read its contents. I'm hitting Control G here to see more detailed information about this green screen. And after some investigation, what I found that there is no property that somehow allows me to read the contents of the screen. So it is also like a black box for me using this technology. So this technology is not sufficient for automating this terminal application. Okay, we're done with your automation. Now let's switch to next type of spy. Go to repeat, click right part of the spy button to change select managed and click on the spy button itself to start spying. So we have managed spy. We may see it from this sign. It says managed object. So I'm hitting control G again and looking at the managed application. So if I select something like a button here, what I may see is that it shows plenty of properties and these properties are more detailed than those that were displayed using UI automation technology. So for 
managed application, managed spy allows to access more low level data, more intrinsic details, such as font used to render this button, size of it, color and um, things like that. They are not really useful for automation, but sometimes some of them may be needed. So managed support provides more potential power to the automation. Now start tracking again and look at other applications. If we look at this calculator using managed spy, we see it highlights something but is unable to see properties. So it sees coordinates that something is here, but it's unable to read the details because this calculator is built using different technology, which is not Windows Forms. The same is true for WPF. It's a complete black box for managed technology and for Java. Again, it highlights something but is unable to show any details and it's a black box completely. Also the same is true for this terminal application. I'm stopping this spy and I may summarize that UI automation were able to see all this except part of Java and terminal application while managed were able to provide more information about .NET but didn't see anything inside other types of application. Now let me switch to the next spy type which is Java. I'm hitting Java spy and looking at Java application first. As before it's able to highlight elements in the AWT part and it is also able to highlight elements in the bottom part. And if I stop tracking at some button, I may also see, just like with Manage Spy, many additional and uh, internal properties of this element. So I can see that I may access really internal data and I may interact with this control using the Java technology. Also, Java works as generic technology for both Java AWT and Java Swing. So it is like UI automation works as generic technology for all desktop on Windows with more or less details, but it is able to interact to some level with everything. So Java is able to interact with different controls within Java application. So it knows Java Swing, it knows AWT and it has potential to work with any other technologies built under the Java using the library. We will talk about libraries later. Now I can to no surprise see that nothing is seen inside other types of application except Java. So Java, Spy and Java technology only for Java applications. There is one more type of Spy, it's accessible. And it's really similar to UI automation, but it's older version and in most cases it's not needed. UI automation supersedes it and provides more detail, so it includes accessible as its part, but is able to see more. And its visibility is similar to that of UI automation, but amount of properties and amount of information that I may get with iAccessible is much less than that of UI automation. So I'm closing the spy and returning to RPS. RPS uses auto detection to find the best technology for giving application. So in most cases you don't have to worry about this, but sometimes it's useful to be aware about how it affects the recorder. Now we will use RPS recorder with each of these applications. 
I will create new test for each of them. First test will be named uh, desktop UI UI automation. It's desktop type of test, repeat visual language for scripting. So I hit record and I will be recording the calculator. I'm doing I'm selecting it from the list of applications. So this is the point where Rapiz makes decision which technology to use for recording. And default choice is auto. And it will detect the technology and libraries relevant for this application. So we rely on this auto choice. We have calculator selected. So I'm starting the recorder and doing something really trivial. One plus two equals that's it. Finish. So the script is recorded successfully. Now let's check what technology were used. To do this, I need to go to the test main JavaScript file and here I may find the load libraries statement. It is a JavaScript array of technologies detected for this application and currently we see that it is detected as UI automation. Now if I hit record and try to do something with this Java application. We may see that it recognizes the click on the whole application. It were unable to recognize that I'm clicking somewhere in the list box or that I'm actually clicking the button. So this recording is mostly useless it may only be used for specific situation when you need to just say do one click to black box application to proceed to some other operation. So this recorder doesn't work with Java application anymore. Now let me do another test. Can okay, create locally. It would be desktop UI Java. This time I'll do the same. I have an empty script and I'm starting the recorder, but I will start recorder with Java application. So I'm selecting it here. And my first action will be interaction with this application. So I'm again selecting an item. And you see the item is recognized in this case. So it's more focused recording. It understands that I clicked on the list box. It understands that I click the button or that I say toggle the checkbox or toggle this checkbox. So it has good understanding of internals for this application. Again, go to the test and we can see that the recognized library is Java, which is base technology library for all Java based controls and widgets. Now let me again start recording and try to interact with calculator. So since it is Java, auto detection doesn't work for this run. So it tries to record everything as Java. And now I click, it understands the window. It, so this button has a window in this technology, but it doesn't understand that it is a button or that it is a text box. So recording is again really unfocused and really high level. So it's 
it would be impossible to make this test data driven it would be fragile and it would be more or less useless this kind of recording may only be used when you need to do say a couple of basic operations and you don't need to read internal state of the application for that so i'm canceling it in our everyday work with computer we usually deal with more than one application and our test scenario may require us to deal with more than one application for example we may need to do something in java and then do something with this calculator we've just recorded some steps in java now we want to add some steps for calculator but as we just tried we saw that recording is not working properly so what should we do here if we go and look at the main js file again main.js we can see that there is an array of technologies and it contains just one value let us just add one more value here for ui automation so in addition to technology detected by auto detection we manually add one more technology and let's see how it will affect the recording hit record now make a couple of steps in calculator two three you see it captures my actions as click on the button so it's good high level recording let me click in the java application two one you can see that it also captures my action in high level mode also it recognizes the control it says last captured java swing list so it understood the type of this control so both were high level recording now let me finish this recording append these steps here let me separate it a bit first rows contain actions with java application last two rows also contain actions for java application while these two internal actions interact with calculator also we may see that we have two groups of objects two windows in the object tree on the left here is the object tree sometimes you don't see it this means that you have files tree in this case you need to just switch to it so it contains objects captured for the java applications and objects captured for the calculator now let me just try to play this and see if it may play the actions that were captured for these two applications and as you may see it were able to interact with both so uh, the playback is fine now let me change the order of these technologies here in the array we have java first now and ui automation second i'm playing it and what i can see is that playback still fine but if i try to record some more steps let me press the calculator button and you see instead of press the button it records the simulated object and click on some simulated area simulated means unknown so just object where i may click but we don't know what's inside let me click in java application and again instead of capturing selection in the list we have this high level simulated with click at coordinates so recorder is broken in this case that means that for playback it doesn't matter in what order i put the technologies but for recorder it may be sensitive to the technology used for specific application what can i do in this case so in this example i knew the proper order so there is a proper order ui automation and uh, then java where this combination of applications work what if 
you have different combination and the order doesn't work why you may record each of these applications alone. The walk around here, so if I don't know the order, I may simply move away one of the technology for a while. Recorder doesn't check where the objects belong to. It only adds objects. So I'm specifying that I will only be using UI automation here. So I can hit record. Do a couple of actions and they are properly captured. Finish. Now I want to add some Java actions and again I don't know the order so I just change your automation with Java. Hit record. Select a couple of items here. Finish. And again recorder worked. I'm adding the steps and now for playback I need to return those back. There is some more fine-grained way to deal with cross-technology borders in rupees. Sometimes you need, for example, to deal with browser and with desktop application. Sometimes you may some more specific combinations where you have mobile and some, say, web application. It may be solved better using subtests as a part of the framework, but for the cases where you need some short test and you need just to cross application boundaries, this approach may be fine. We just considered root technologies used to build the UI for Windows. Now we will talk about control libraries used to enrich the UI. Since they affect the UI, they change the behavior of application and visual look so the testing tool should be aware about these technologies. Let's consider an example and see how RPS deals with control libraries and how it affects the recorder. So the application I'm going to automate is Dynamic Snap. Let me just hit record and rely on the auto detection to find out the technology for this application. What I'm going to do is to interact with this grid control that you see on the screen. I'm simply clicking on the cell with the name of the customer. You see how it's captured. It captured the click cell action for the data grid view object. So it recognized that this whole object is a single object and what we did is an action within that object. So it's a high level recording. Let me finish it, so it will remember my action and also it will set the technology and libraries for this project. So it was using UI automation technology and Dynamics NEF library. This library adds support for some controls uh, using this technology that are found in this application. Let me simply remove this library from here and see how recording works without this control support. I'm removing it, saving and trying to record again. Now recorder started, I'm doing very similar action, clicking on the, clicking on the same cell uh, on the next row. And you see that it found click on some object called name row 3. It's just an object and it's just a single object. So it didn't recognize the whole grid. It didn't recognize the high level action. So recording were done, but it much worse than that with the special support library. So we talked about technologies, about spy application in rupees that may work with different types of technologies, about auto detection of technology and manual detection, about cross technology recording with this manual detection and finally we talked about control libraries and custom widgets and how it is supported by rupees libraries. Thank you for joining and I welcome you to the second and third part of this workshop.